keep our rear neck impression for you boys. We are on a Panigale 1299 Panigale S. The S stands for stupid expensive and stupid fast. You know what I'm saying, man? You know what I'm, you about? I'm talking to you about that right now, man. That's what the S stands for. I couldn't, I couldn't get the R because that's just ridiculous. The 1299 R stands for ridiculous. But I got my friend. I'm drooling on myself talking to you. All right, all right. Just driving along, riding. I'm crazy, mother. Got the yellow Camaro coming up beside my lip. Come on, man. He wants to race. He wants to go hot in that corner. He's hot. He's coming in the cop. This corner. I'm going in like a like a whipper. Crazy, crazy man. Crazy man going hot. I don't know where my son is. It's hard to tell because these mirrors aren't 100% great. So I'm trying to, to figure out which way we're going. I'm, I'm, I'm the navigator on this trip. Oh, come on, man. Get, get in neutral. Get in neutral, my friend. Come on. He's shaking his head at me like I'm a crazy mother. I'm going to go that way. I don't know how many miles, I got 172. My glasses are making my polarization. I got polarization on my glasses. Oh, look at that, man. look at that. Where is she riding to? It's like, reminding me of the Wizard of Oz there. You know, an old, the witch is riding along in the, in the tornado with the... She's riding along in the tornado with the music's playing and she's got the dog in the... She's got to remember, she got the dog? Is the dog in the basket? Maybe. That just reminded me, you know, she was on a mission. That lady was on a mission to go somewhere i never seen a lady, old lady like that riding that fast. She was on a mission. I apologize, people. Don't, don't beat me up. Don't beat me up too bad. I'm getting used to this bike. It is much different than what I had been riding. Ringing for my life. And the smoke got me. I got bronchitis. Nobody got time for that. I let him ride in front of me. The ride below. Yamaha XSR is he had lights on. And we took it to the Yamaha dealership. We live 80 miles away. I'm trying to give you a quick synopsis here. He calls them to close on Mondays or Sundays and Mondays. So he calls them on Tuesday three days after he buys it. He says, my check engine light's on, all my lights are on, what should I do? They said, bring it in. They said, well, I got no ABS, I got no traction control, all the safety features are disabled, plus it's a check engine light. So he doesn't want to ride it. They say, check the oil and ride it like it doesn't have ABS or, or uh, come on, ride it like it doesn't have ABS or uh, traction control which to me is kind of asinine. 
So, uh, <clears throat> and then we can't bring it over there because they close at six. He works. And what? Come on, man. I don't know which way we're going. Go that way. Story is. I'm off point here. I'm getting. I'm getting distracted. Too much stuff going on. So the whole plan was to bring the bike back on Saturday because we can't go over during the week. And they said you gotta leave it till Tuesday because the Yamaha guy's not here. We can't call Yamaha Diagnostics because they're not there on the weekends and blah blah blah. So I'm like, that's a bunch of crap because you just bought a brand new bike, you got all these problems, and now you want them to take it to you. He doesn't want to ride it because of the issues. He doesn't want to screw anything up. And then you want us to leave it with you. And, uh... Which means the next time... The next time, uh, we can come get it is Saturday. So that's two weeks, basically, with the bike that has issues. with uh, less than 100 miles on it or whatever. But the issue started less than 100 miles. So I'm sorry, I'm getting all, this bike is, is so distracting, the loveliness of it. So, back to the story. So we bring it there yesterday morning, and I go with them because I'm like, this is a bunch of crap. We're gonna, either, they're either gonna, They're gonna either give them some money back or give them a discount on some merchandise, more than the 10%, blah, blah, blah. They gotta do something because this is ridiculous. So we bring it in. Salesman's like, oh, let me, what's the problem? Uh, they take it, to, take it to the service department and the service department guys, okay, we're gonna do this. We got, basically told us the same story. Guy's not here. Our A tech isn't here. So I guess their B, C, D, whatever tech is there. I don't know what do you want to call it. And so we're not going to be able to do anything until Tuesday. So I say to the guy, so that means he's going to be without a bike all next week because we can't get over here. We live in Palm Bay. And his answer to me is, oh well, you could have brought it to a closer dealer. It's warranty. They would have fixed it. Um, like to me, I'm like that's the wrong answer. The right answer is, well, let me do something for you. Let me give you a loaner or something. So obviously the guy doesn't care. The service department, whatever, he doesn't really want to. Son, just leave him. Where is he going? Get back here. This road sucks. It's smooth here, but I don't want to go on that second. That middle lane is bumpy. So. Uh, story, story, story. So I go to the general manager or the sales manager or the manager, or I guess he is. I don't know his exact title. Which is a pretty nice guy. And I'm not going to name dealership names. I'm not going to name people's names. I'm not going to, no, this isn't about that. So he says... Well, what's going on? You know, he doesn't know what's. I was like, oh, look, can you do something? Because I explained him the whole story, and he says, well, let me see. How old is he? So I'm thinking he's going to get him a, a loaner. So we go. He like, disappears, and then comes back, and then you see him out there on messing with the bike and. Basically, the whole moral to the story, or the whole point of the story is, I pressured them a little bit, they figured out what was wrong with it, luckily it was something stupid like the metal in the, there was a piece of metal in the ABS sensor that was throwing a code, and that seemed to fix everything. He rode it home, and he's got his bike, doesn't have to be without it for a week. But then I asked the guy, I'm like, you know, 
for all this hassle since buying a new bike, we gotta come all the way over here. But you know, don't even—they don't even offer. Oh, we'll give you gas. I mean, how much does it fill up a gas on a bike? Nine bucks for the hassle of riding over and back. Don't even offer that. Oh, you can get a—you uh, can get 10% off of. Uh, you can get 10% off of. Uh, off of uh, merchandise, which is what you're going to get anyway. So, what? What's the point? I don't get it. So yeah. So we didn't get pretty much nothing for our hassle, our time. Didn't get nothing. But aggravation. But they did fix it. They got it back. And blah, blah. But the point is. They didn't want to do anything. Did it, did it, the, the level of urgency, or the sense of urgency, was not there. It was pretty much, hey, whatever, just leave it here. Sorry about your problems. And I don't like escalating things. I'm not a confrontational guy. But, come on. Come on. That's it. Come on. Come on. It's crazy. Crazy, I tell you. So what we're doing here, or what? This is kind of like a break-in. I used to put my left ankle. Break-in biking here. Easy accelerations, easy braking. All the stuff for the first. 600 miles. All that stuff. So people... Oh, come on. This is Naked Bike Mike. No longer on a naked bike, but I'm gonna stay true to my name. Well, not stay true to my name, but I'm not changing my name. I'm still Naked Bike Mike, and I appreciate you watching. Like down here, subscribe. And thanks for watching this latest edition on the Unnaked Motorcycle. As always, I appreciate the comments, I appreciate the likes, I appreciate the subscriptions, or subscribers, and we will be back with you again on the next time, and uh, that's about it. Arrivederci. I'll see you later. Uh, goodbye. Ciao. Uh, my friend.